Now we're here at Colorado Morphologics Place. We're gonna visit our good friend Colin. It's been a long time. Lou's already in the building. Let's go check him out before he takes all the calls from me, man. He wants calls from his tank, not cool. All right, all right. Show me what you got going on, man. All Let's right. see. I don't even know where to start. Let's start where with do the, we start? Let's start with the studio, because you know, Coral Morphologic, we, we grow corals, but we're also producing uh, photography and videography and multimedia. So what you're looking at here are uh, 3D printed sculptures of the Performing Arts Center in downtown Miami, the Arts Center. And during uh, Art Basel, Miami Art Week in early December, we projection mapped the building itself after we filmed the Recordia and the star polyps growing on the models and then projected it back on the full-size building it itself. So I think that we created the, the largest uh, projections of corals ever made, ever, on a building. And so here we have the Recordia Florida. These are actually from Miami. They're, they're local uh, Recordia Florida. I've got the green star polyps. This is one of the oldest corals that I, that I, that I grow. Uh, this is from Gable's Aquarium, which was the first aquarium store I worked at when I moved to Miami in the year 2000. So I've been growing this coral for more than 23 years. And, That's so cool. And George has probably grew it uh, for several years before that. And so this is kind of like, you know, I, I like how, I like how the, the, the corals that I have, there's always usually a story person that I got it from. You know, I, that's what I think is really cool about collecting corals is, cool. is, is the lineage. Tell me some of the projects that you've been working on in the past. I know you work with Volcom for some clothing before. Yeah, you know, we, we're, the, the goal of Coral Morphologic is to try and like bring corals to people that aren't hobbyists or scientists. So, you know, we try to infiltrate pop culture through music and fashion. So, you know, we've done, we've done some clothing collaborations with, with Volcom. Um, we've done um, musical collaborations with the band Animal Collective and, and a bunch of other different, different bands. Um, my, my partner in Coral Morphologic, he's a musician and an artist as well. So, you know, I'm kind of the marine biologist and the aquaculturist. Yes. We can talk about like the Coral City camera project that we do. It's like a live streaming camera you can yeah, watch on YouTube. Yeah, that's been there for a long time, right? Yeah, we're three, three years underwater. Um, you know, and so we get, we, we've, we've been, you know, just any sort of attention that we can draw into the yeah. coral reef ecosystem, uh, art, science, fashion, uh, you know, we, 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 we try to fill in all the gaps in the places that maybe there isn't so much representation. With, gotcha. with, with and course. how people can see this camera, this underground, uh, this underwater uh, camera? Yeah, they can, they, can, they can watch it on YouTube 24-7. Of course, during the daytime is, is when we have the, the, the best light. So how long have you been here now? So we've been here about 18 months uh, since we signed the lease and, and we have uh, five systems. I don't know, we probably have around 3,000 gallons of, of water. Yeah, it's pretty um, impressive. You're running a lot, a lot of aquariums. In yeah, here. We, it's a, you know, it's a, I'm here. I'm here seven days a week. Um, I've got some assistants that help. Uh, you know, 10, 20 hours a week, depending on what needs what needs to get done. But you know, I'm pretty much. Uh, so basically, I'm here, you. Seven, I'm, I'm here seven days a week. But, so I, but this, is, this is this is like my, my my coral sanctuary. You know, so like to be here on the weekends, I turn out all the lights except the except the coral blue lights. Uh, and it's just you know, there's no place I'd rather be as long as the corals are happy. You know. These are a whole bank of Fiji cubes and okay. with the external overflows uh, through bulk reef supply. Okay. So, you know, I've got six 11 gallon cubes and five 22 gallon cubes with external overflows that all go to one large wet dry. So we have all, oh, the, all cool. the filtration. Oh, cool. So they're not individual tanks. Yeah, so Let me not. check this out real quick. Yeah. And that's, you know, I think that that, that, that makes uh, the ability to set up a bunch of little biotopes a lot easier when you don't have to maintain wow, each Wow, I like your one. style, buddy. Right? So, you know, that way, this is good for like having- Very smart, guys, very smart. Having, you having- You gotta work smart, no hard. What were you saying? You got, you know, this is good if you wanna have, you know, I've got sea anemones and you, you know, types of corals that, that sting each other. And it's nice to be able to kind of like- And you don't have to be doing different uh, water tests for each tank. Exactly. It's all one water volume, you e know? Exactly, so check, cool. out, check out this little cube here. This is, is mac it? this is macroalgae. It's gorgeous. I it's was going to ask It's you. a fluorescent macroalgae that I saw growing in Julian Spung's refugium, and I said, Julian, what's I that? I gotta have that. And he said, I don't know what that is. And when Julian Sprung says, I don't know what that is, you gotta have it. You gotta have it. So he gave me a he gave me like a, a, a little piece, thumb sized piece, uh, maybe six or eight months ago. And let me tell you, this is this is gonna like replace Dragon's Breath as like not only as a as as a just a beautiful ornamental macroalgae, but also for like refugiums, you can tumble it really easily. It doesn't, it doesn't fall apart. It doesn't, you know, doesn't go uh, sexual like Calerpa does. So like, we I haven't, we it. haven't named it yet. We're gonna have to, you know, you, you're the, you're the, the mastermind with the good names. We got to come up with, with a name that, that came from, came from Julian, of course. He's the, he's the godfather. Yes. But, but it's gorgeous. I mean, th these are Black Widow. Uh, 
Nems. Bubble tips. And so look and at And the camouflage in there. And the and the, and, 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 and the and the macro algae is literally like brighter red than the black widow. So wait that's till for like, another six months, you're gonna have to be like, where's Waldo? <laughs> to exactly. look for the Nems. They're exactly. gonna be they're gonna be lost in there. Yeah. So yeah, I got. See what he got some. Uh, yeah, this is like a, like, like a gi this is a gi giant zinnia. Uh, it, it was uh, it's it's from Australia. It's, it's just a, an enormous zinnia. But what's really great about this one is like it comes like a tree almost. It like becomes a, a tree. It doesn't grow as fast, so you don't have to worry about it turning into a weed. I uh, love and it, it. And it's really good for big for big aquariums. How long have you had it? Uh, five years five? probably, but you know I could make more. Uh, Cuttings. I just need more space to, to, to make the cuttings, but it's kind of slow for 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 a zinnia. It grows a lot slower. Uh, really okay. nice white. Mm -hmm. This is another Julian Sprung special. We were at a at a frag swap locally here in Miami. He said, "Colin, you got it. There's one. There's one left. There's a soft coral you got to get. This is called Paramina bia, uh, and it came from Vietnam. And it's a really. It's kind of like a chili coral, but I think it's like a, a whole lot more attractive. Yes. It's kind of like a doctor. It looks like something out of a Dr. Seuss book." Um, and, I, and I feed it um, gonia power, you know, pretty much daily, and the, the polyps come out. You know, otherwise it's sort of like shrunk down into a, into a little red kind of like lump. But right now I've been feeding it. So. So what's with the algae in the bottom? I really like it. Yeah. The, How so do you get this, to control that or to grow it? It's a, this is a good question. This was a hitchhiker that came with uh, with with the red paramenibia soft coral, and it's a really tiny calerpa. I asked uh, Julian. I was like, Julian, what 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 is this? I have to look at, at the species that, that, that it is. It's a type I of like calerpa. It. Nice. Really really I'm nice. Really it. fine. Strange things happening in these cubes, right? Like we have two cubes. They both have the same. They both have anemones. They both have uh, refugite as a substrate. This one's had dinoflagellates for four, I three or four them. months. None of the other tanks. Isn't that weird? And I it know. just stays here. Same and, water, and same light. Same water, same light. Everything. And these are Why like mi it? mysteries. How it hasn't gotten around? I don't know. But uh, mysteries but that will never mysteries. know. And the other cool, you got to check uh, the, the the black the long clownfish, tentacle? the black clownfish that lives in the long tentacle anemone. If it will come out, we'll see him. Yeah, she's 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 one of the first. Come to, on, come hang out. She'll come say I'll, hi. I'll, I'll feed I'll feed her. Um, she's one of the first black clownfish to come into the United States in the 90s. She's like 30 years old. She produced a lot. She's of, a big mom, huh? Yeah, she produced she produced a lot of babies uh, for a number of years, and then has been kind of like retired. She's in a bad mood. I'm telling you. She's, she yeah, is. she 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 likes to just hang out in the anemone. Does she she's bite old. you? Does she bite you? Not this one isn't too isn't too aggressive, but she's no. you know she's old. She's an old. This fish. guy seems aggressive. And this this fish uh, this we, we tend to be a, a um, clownfish rescue. This is an Allard's, uh, Allard's clownfish in a carpet that came from my friend who's moving. And it's a gorgeous clownfish. Yeah, it's a really, really nice clownfish. Um, I love the term rescue corals. Yeah, we're just like res rescue fish, no rescue corals. clownfish. Um, and then, you know, pretty much the rest, the rest of these cubes are, are kind of like coral by genus or coral by type. I like it. So here right? we got the Lophilias, you know, the the yep. uh, Galaxias. And I got the Galaxias here. You know, I got a, got a bunch of different, different kinds. You know, these guys are the sweepers of death. This is one system. All of these. This so this to the to the end is is all on so the one. So one, two, one, three, four, five, five into one plus sump. Six. Yeah, so oh, plus six. six. So okay, it's eleven gotcha. tanks into 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 one sump. Um, so I got the the elegans. And uh, these are what twenty gallon more, right? These 25? ones are these are twenty twos. Yeah, they make them in 22? eleven, twenty two, and thirty three. Um, <laughs> and it's they're, they're yeah they're great they're great great little great little cubes. Uh, and then of course I got the sprung stunner next to the Hollywood stunner, so you, yes. can, you can see that see the and difference. And the fire lamellosa. So you got all three. Yeah. These are different. These two. Those. Well, I, these were the. These actually are the same. The they same? came from the same colony. Yeah. It's, okay. This one just had more. This gotcha. one's been in it longer and has got more light. Okay. Um, but it, it's a it's a Hollywood stunner. And then this tank, I've got some small polyp alveopora. So most of it is all one colony. And I've had. I've been growing it for you like five or six. It, it just. It kind of grows. It grows in in these weird knobby kind of growths. And you know, alveopora is really weird. The, yeah. the skeleton is super light. But I've got a couple of really nice. Those uh, are nice, those two right yeah, there. Yeah, these, these, the red and the greens, and then of course I got the acanthophilias, the, the uh, trachophilias, the, the buttons uh, there. Yeah, button, button. The crocs collies. Yeah. yeah, we, we, we cleaned the tank yesterday, so Look. they're they're a little up, a little upset, but you know. Look at this thing; it's ready to eat, guys. You guys see me right there? <laughs> that thing is ready to eat, eat. And I feed, and I feed the them one in the every back. day. The big giant red sea arena is looking incredible. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I've had I've had some of these corals for for years years and years. I, I feed them. So this now is the, yeah, this is the, the my torch tank and these uh, the black with the green tip torch. I've been growing for 
12 or 13 years. Um, and then I got a, a couple of, I got this, I guess, holy grail type coral uh, pretty recently. But, you know, if you can get an aquacultured uh, torch coral, you know, that's, the, in my, my experience, they always do Torches, really yeah. great. They grow yeah, well. They grow well. Um, and then I got I got the I got a I got a sarco, I got a sarcophyton collection and I've got the, uh, the dendrophil I got these dendros here which are, are really these are fluorescent dendros they're gorgeous yeah you usually you know this one has a fluorescent mouth but these ones are like actually totally fluorescent gorgeous uh, yeah and I and everybody gets fed uh, you know feed the feed the gonia power. power yep and I'd use use pipettes. Uh, now this coral here, what the heck is this? Talk to me about this. All right, this is this is probably the, the, the coral that has the coolest backstory of any coral that we have. Biggest so, bubble coral, wall bubble that I've ever seen. This pearl bubble coral is a frag of a coral that uh, was originally bought by my friend in 1996. Um, and so, yeah, Richard Ramos, he's a, he's a fire, firefighter here at, in Miami, and he brought the frag to his firehouse where he has a, a saltwater aquarium, and, and he brought this frag in 2013, and it literally grew until it was taking up all of the tank. And so he, he, he called me up and said, do you know anyone that wants a huge bu bubble coral? And I said, absolutely. I do. Absolutely. So this, so this coral, you know, is lineage back from the very first coral that he bought from there was a, a, a house on Bird Road here in Miami called Professional Fish Keepers um, or Professional or Coral Keepers or, or something right. way back in the day. And it was his very first, fish very, yep, very first coral that he ever bought. And, and you know, to, I, I love the, the fact that it's got such a cool backstory. And it's a beautiful coral. Got the, the, the porcelain crab that, that lives wow, on this, this giant. Wow, this is our. Look at it from the top, guys. Yeah, this is, this is uh, you know, I think the carpet, he's probably at least eight, 20 inches, 20 inches in diameter at least. Here's my, I mean. And this is, uh, I've, been, I've been looking for a metallic blue carpet to go with it so we can get the Miami Vice <laughs> colors. There was one at Magna this year that I really wanted, that I really wanted, but. I got a pink carpet. They the wouldn't, shop. they I got wouldn't. a red and a pink next A red to and a pink, pink one. oh, that's nice, yeah. And then I've got the I got the rainbow bubble tips here that just sort of grow <laughs> grow completely out of out of hand, uh, and I need to I need to I need to thin them out. So can I ask you a little bit of maintenance yeah, on, sure. the, on these two systems a little yeah. bit? Yeah, we're using calcium reactor with with CO2, so that's how okay. we do the, the the calcium and alkalinity. What brand reactor do you use? Uh, this is a this is a reef reef octopus. Okay. Uh, I forget I forget the model. So, double chamber, eight okay. inch uh, double chamber, and I use the reborn from Two Little Fishies. Which is yeah. really great. Um, yeah, with the, with the CO2, we're using a, a Kmor a dosing pump to run the water through okay. uh, through the reactors. I got the reef octopus uh, skimmers. I love reef octopus skimmers. I think that they're they're just sort of really solid. Uh, never really have a whole yeah, lot they're of great. Pro problems with them. What about for return pump? Return pump, we're using a Vectra L okay. uh, L2 on on all of these systems that we that we have here, and then we'll use the uh, MP. <laughs> 40s or MP10s. Uh, do you um, do you dose anything else besides the reactor? I feed I feed every, every day. The goni uh, power. What, go, yep, what do you yeah, feed? I feed feed goni power. I'm also uh, I culture probiotics. So I'm doing the Dr. Tim's uh, the Eco Balance uh, with uh, I think it's the one and only or you, you mix it up. I'll, I'll show you. You cult, grow it in a in a in a five gallon container. Okay. And then I'll add uh, that you know, five, about five days a week. Um, and then the the, the coral food. Um, you know, we're really not doing a whole lot of, uh, probably could be better, you know, we're not doing regular ICP testing, so, you know, I'm not, couldn't tell you exactly um, all, the, all the levels of, of elements that we have, but, you know, you just kind, of feel, kind of feel it out. You know, are we you test doing alkalinity. any agro power or any? No, we're not, I mean, I think, any, I think, I think the, the food. Any aminos, the, core aminos? I mean, the the food has got the aminos in it, right? It's all okay. it's all you know, and all the product, all of the like the, the the krill and all of the gotcha. the, the components, the spirit, you know, all the things that, that Julian uses in his products are all you know full full of of, of natural aminos, and, okay. and so the corals I think are able to get all those micronutrients, trace elements uh, through just just feeding a lot, um, you know, and I'll, I'll even add add a little bit into the 600 for the SPS, just just to just to let the the corals kind of, um, you know, be bathed in the nutrients. I mean, we, some of the nitrate levels in here can be between like 20 to 50 parts per million. Corals, okay. corals are fine. You know, we're, we're use, we use GFO for phosphate, um, which, which is great. You know, we're using the um, two little fishies, uh, phosphan and hydrocarbon. Um, so we got, yeah, we got the carbon uh, in the media reactor and we got the GFO in the media reactor. Okay. Um, 
And yeah, I mean, I, I, I try to keep things as simple as possible. You know, you can see mostly I don't have substrates, yeah. uh, just to keep cleaning a little bit easier, to keep nutrient levels down. Uh, I tend to run, you know, blue LEDs. I'm running the Radions. We've got the, the XR15s and the XR30s, uh, the G5s. And those, you know, are great. Uh, and definitely, you got to be careful with, with, with blue LEDs that you can, you can definitely cook corals. So yeah, you you know, my, my advice is always to, to start them shaded, start, start a coral at an angle. I've you know, been on my you, videos. You, you, put, you put the coral top straight to the, to, the, to the light and they will bleach out. Yeah. Um, so what about water changes? So we get natural seawater delivered. We, got, we have a 600 gallon uh, tub that we, that we can get filled up um, okay. from VIP saltwater. Okay. Um, and we do, you know, we do, we do water changes sort of as, as needed, um, you know, four to six weeks usually. Okay. Um, again, it all kind of depends on, on what our water test, we, we, we do weekly water testing, um, you know, unless, I, unless maybe it seems like we need to do more, more than that, but otherwise, you know, we do tests cool. on Mondays and just kind of like track when, you know, we need to change out our, our FOSPAN or or if the nitrates start to creep up a little bit, but you know, I, I, the corals love the nitrates. You know, they're they're actively yeah, utilizing. They it's well, a I like to keep my nitrates at about twenty. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a it's a fertilizer. You know, they're using that nitrogen for to feed the zooxanthellae that is ultimately giving them the energy to to keep building more skeletons. So you know, yes, I've been seeing this big tank. It's an Ellos tank that you have a while back. Yeah, this is a six hundred gallon Ellos aquarium uh, that was actually given to me by a friend that had it in a, in a house uh, on Biscayne Bay and he sold his house during the pandemic for a huge amount of money and needed to get it out as soon as possible. Yeah, and I met him with you actually, we went to his house back then. Yeah, and so, you know, we, the problem with this tank is that it was so big that it split a seam and this one was empty when I got it, but we, we Euro braced it. So we had uh, Bob from yeah, the right? It was rimless, but you know, it, it's so large that it bowed and it, and it started leaking. So that's a, that's a huge problem and a liability. So we just had it Euro braced to make it really safe. Um, but now I've got essentially a free 600 gallon peninsula aquarium. Uh, I use the carob sea life tree, like the, uh, what do they call them? Life rock trees. I love those rocks, they're pretty cool I, rocks. I aquascape this whole tank in under an hour and a half, but all of the fish in this tank are captive raised. So all of the fish are, are either biota um, like the rabbit fish are from, from Palau, the yellow tangs are by out of Hawaii. I've got all of the angels, like the gold flake angel, uh, the majestic angel. I got a, a multi bar. Those are from everything, huh? Oh, I got a regal. That's from that's from uh, Wen Ping Su, Bali Aqua Rich. I have a lemon peel from ORA. The dotty backs are from ORA. The chalk bass is ORA. Damsels are from ORA. So to be able to have a 600 gallon aquarium with like an awesome selection of amazing fish. That aren't just clownfish, um, to, that are aquacultured. I think is like you know, as a as as a hobby, we should collectively be very proud that we've we've gotten to this spot. And of course, most of these corals are are, are aquacultured or lineaged. You know, whether it's the Garf bonsai or the pink Cadillac. Um, you know, all these corals, uh, for the most part, are aquacultured or, or or will be able to be aquacultured. Cool. How long yeah. is the tank? Uh, it is. I think it's a 12, 12 feet by three feet wide by 30 inches deep. So uh, it, is, it is definitely the largest aquarium mm -hmm. I've ever owned. Um, but I love it. I love the fact that I can oh, it's gorgeous. Walk, all, walk all the way around it. And I've got three sides of, of, of viewing. And yeah, it's a it's, How long it's has it been different. running for? We're just, just at, after six months. Um, mm -hmm. So you know, I mean, we're, 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 I'd say we've, we've hyper accelerated the, the SPS. Um, a lot of them, of course, were colonies that I had grown before putting them in here, but yeah. uh, for the most part, we've, we've, we've done pretty well getting all these uh, acros pretty happy. So this, is, this will pretty much be entirely acro dominated. Right. Wow, this is beautiful, buddy. Gorgeous. Yeah, so this, this tub here has kind of got a collection of uh, LPS corals that a little bit lower light, a little bit lower flow, kind of a little bit more lagoon. I've got the chalice collection. I really love the mycetium corals, you know, like the Raja yeah. Rampage, uh, the Avatar chalices. A um, little bit of everything I got, see. Here. Got a little bit. Of, got a little bit of everything. Um, see some lamellosas, like you said, mycetiums. You got yeah. some recordias over there. Yeah, we got. Got a giant fungia. Yeah, I've got. And that's the, the true meaning of giant, guys. Yeah, I've got. That fungia is what do you think? Ten inches across? E, e, probably twelve. Probably twelve. And 12, I've got. And, a, and I have a ton of ton of babies of of uh, of this. This is. Those are second generation now. 
fungi has grown off of a plate that this one also had a sister that, so yeah, I'm in multiple generations now of, of these fungi as the same ones. This is a really cool, this is a, a Turbinaria uh, bifrons. I love it. That one right there, that's a really rare coral from Western Australia that, uh, yes. you know, that's a, that's a coral that I know Jake Adams was, was always on the search, search for. So whenever Beautiful. I think of this coral, I, I think of him. Beautiful and, coral. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a really unique and, and rare turbinaria. I know, you know Julian is a big turbinaria fan. This giant turbinaria actually came as a frag from Julian Sprung about 10 years ago. So that's, uh, you know, it's, it's I've, been, uh, I've been growing, growing that to the set from the frag, I think, sim similar time. So they just keep, keep growing. You can see, if anything, we're, we're, we're having trouble, uh, you know, I'm running out of space. Like I've got my, my trays full. These are Lobactus corals here. They're, they're, they're like a type of plate coral. Yeah, um, how long have you been growing those for? Since I, I got the original mother from Vincent Chalier, Bali Aquarium in 2013. And so 10 years now. Yeah, so, so 10 years, and I think, you know, she's, she's produced and over two, probably over 200, and the babies, so I have sec second generations. Um, so Lobactus is definitely one of those corals that you want to hold on to the skeleton because it can be like... Three, yeah, they always three to, drop them babies. I call them baby droppers. They're amazing. Three to six months even after afterwards, uh, they're really reliable. So, so definitely one of, one of my favorite, favorite corals. Also, I see you got some nice mycelium over there. I see you got recordias everywhere. Yeah. I see those blastomer ladies. I love the blastomer ladies. Beautiful uh, candy yeah. cane. Yeah, I love the colastria for Kata. I did a did a, a, a research paper in Australia in college on colastria for Kata with um, uh, Dr. Charlie Gregory from the Reef Institute. He and I go way back. Um, so I have a soft spot for Tubastria for Kata. Yeah. And I can't help it but to see the giant uh, Duncan head that you have over there. I got that giant uh, Duncan uh, in Milwaukee in Macna, the most recent Macna. Yeah that's, yeah, that's like a three inch in diameter mega Duncan. Mega Duncan. Mega Duncan. You guys heard the <laughs> mega Duncan. And so the, the latest hypothesis I've heard on the Duncans is that they're actually a turbinaria. And that they're just giant turbinaria, which makes a lot of sense. You look at a turbinaria, just and you, you know, the Duncan is really just like a, a, a puffy one, a huge, a huge version. So you know, I mean, the more the more that, that uh, we do genetics on these corals, the, the more we realize that they're they're related in different ways. Cool. Never thought about it that way. Right. Let's go see the other one. Yeah. Let's go check out the zoanthotub. A little bit of everything. You know, we we having to move the corals from from the house uh, over here over the course of the past 18 months. You know, sometimes it's like get behind and the corals, they, they just start growing on the egg crate, you know. It's well, a, that's a, a good thing. It's a tough problem to have, right? Yeah, um, you can always cut the egg crate. So I've got... Uh, exactly, if you know, you know. If you know, you know. I've got, you know, like these orange oxides. Uh, zoanthids. Are, zoanthids, I've had those for, for, for a long time. Those came from, from DJ Skitty, who I think got them from, from, from Cornbread. DJ Skitty, shout out. Always. Matt. And uh, yeah, so you know, just got like, a, and, and a bunch of these soft corals are, are originally from Palau, biota corals that uh, I've been growing out for about four or five years, and some kind of weird simularias, and it's beautiful. I love, I love Capnella, yeah. I mean, I love soft corals, I love all the corals. <laughs> what is that one right there? This one here? Yeah. It's a, it's a, a, a Monty Cap of some kind, but it's really cool. I got it from Gator Corals as a, a frag. Uh, it's been keeping it like Yeah, it's, 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 cool. it's, it's uh, I'm, I'm really excited to get this one really like Big. pumped out yeah, as, a, as, a, as a cap. It should look really nice. And this beautiful rock name, me and Lou were looking at it earlier, and we thought it was a scenerina. It took me like 20 seconds because the flow was going on. But it's one of the nicest ones I've ever seen. It's and gorgeous. I, and I got that. It was all bleached out at a local fish store for $30. And, and that, you know, sometimes you just you just got to. Sometimes you just got to give them time. That's right. And I can help it to see the ocean, the sea yeah. of zoanthids that you have over there. They're so happy, so beautiful, you know. Yeah, and I feed a lot. Like I'm feeding, I'm feeding the the, the gonia power um, with a pipette probably f at least three times a week, and doing broadcast feeding at least another two or three days out of the week. So there's there's no shortage of nutrients and, and food, um, and that's I would say you know, all the years of growing coral. The feeding is it's important. Is really important. It wasn't anything that people really yeah. were like talking about 20 years ago. Everything was about chemistry. Everything was about yeah. If you know, don't feed, they they starve themselves. They go pale. That's they right. look weak. They don't grow. That's right. I mean, at the end of the day, they have an algae that lives in their tissue. So you got to grow the algae. Uh, you just want to grow the the good kinds of algae. 
Yeah. So this is what I will call Monty Pura heaven, huh? We got a lot of Montes in here. I love Montes. You know, they just grow really fast, um, and and they get a, they they can get a bit weedy really quickly. But you know, at the same time, it's nice to have a coral, a stony coral that, that really like you can see get really big and fill in really nice. I and mean, lots of the, the red. You can't. It's hard to beat the red out of a Monty. Especially the Satosa. Yeah, of course, you uh, got some grafted spots in it. That's cool yeah, to see. It's a, and that's so one thing that I notice is a lot of people think that Montiporas is just like an Acopora because it's an SPS. Mm -hmm. So when they're new to the hobby, the first thing that they do, they put it to the top and they bleach the coral mm -hmm. real quick. Yeah. And I tell people, Montipora is actually a coral that it can, it, can get it, can it can get used to the light. Yep. But that doesn't mean it's the right thing to do, if you don't, especially if you don't have the right nutrients. Yeah. So do you do you feel the same way? Because I see yours are nice and rich and they're growing like weeds. It, I, exactly. I, I, when we first moved them in here, um, they paled out. Of course, you know, I had a lot of these at home and they, they look just like this. So they're really now just after, you know, it's taken, take, took them about a year of acclimating to this new system, you know, probably brighter lights. They paled out. Um, and now, now they're 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 both fully back with with all their colors. So yeah, it's definitely definitely a coral that you you want. I mean, with any coral, uh, so, acclimated slowly. Yeah, check this out. I can help. I can uh, help it, but to laugh, because I do the same thing at the shop. We frag a bunch of them, <laughs> and then they overgrow so much that you have to break them up again by hand, yeah, and then you have to let them, them heal. Out. Exactly. Yeah, so that's the sunset, Mystic Sunset. It's a gorgeous the, yeah, coral. Yeah, that's the Mystic Sunset. And then over here, I have got the, the orange, I think what they call it, the Megachrome. You know it's the, or, the orange version. But this, this one I've, gotcha. I've been meaning to cut up because it's got some green grafts, grafted spots in it. Um, wow. So it's, but it has the same kind of like blue, blue and, and black uh, polyps that the Mystic Sunset has. Wow. And I got uh, Bernard, some Bernard Poras, the small polyp gonies. You know what's those. funny? People call them a small polygony, and they do until they get super healthy. Mm -hmm. And please tell me you haven't seen them reach 10 inches like when, oh, kind of like a the, hammer. Some the, tentacles, they just send them the, really far. These, these are the most aggressive corals that they, I have. They are. And, and, and I, I will, if... Oh, they stung you. They, they, stung, they sting me. I will get blisters from the Bernardopora, um, even when I feel like they haven't been directly touched. Even if I'm sometimes near them. The, wow. The, the underside of my sensitive part of my wrist and my, and my arm, I'll get like poison ivy blisters. Always should be, should be mentioned that coral sensitivity is something that gets worse over time. So the more that you handle corals, the more sensitive that you act. So rather than building up some sort of immunity, the, usually the opposite happens where you wind up getting more sensitive. And there are scientists that have worked with corals that had to stop handling corals or working with the corals because just it, it, they became got like an allergy. So, wearing gloves uh, in, and yes. minimizing, you know, direct contact with corals is definitely something that you should aim for. And this is a really cool. That's the that's the big R candy land. Beautiful. Um, You've been like growing that for a while. RIP. Yeah, I've had that for for five. It's, it's funny. The first time that it grew out, it grew out into a table with really narrow tips that were growing up, and now it's growing out in like a more kind of like classic yeah. branching branching coral, but. Uh, there's yeah, the jack-o'-lantern over there as yeah, well. Got the, got the, got the jack-o'-lantern uh, left us. I love all the encrusters. You can see along the sides. I, I'll grow them on, on tiles, but I'm growing the tiles like at a vertical angle. It's another coral that you know you got to be real careful introducing it under really bright light. They can um, they bleach out really easily. They recover fairly easily, but you know that can take sometimes like a month or two. So it's definitely uh, you know something. It, Another thing I noticed, you mainly use Ecotech Marine Pearls for flow, mainly, mm -hmm. for yep. flow and lighting? Yep, yeah, yeah. mostly. What that. generations are these lights? Uh, these, are the G, these are the G5s. Okay. Um, the blues, G5 You mainly blues. have G5 in the whole facility? Yeah, I have a handful of G4s uh, from, 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 the, from the house okay. that, uh, that I've, I've, I've had yeah. to use, but uh, yeah, these are all the G, G5s. Cool, I love them. Yeah, they're really great. Yeah. So this is the last stop on this side of the room. Yep. Yeah. This is uh, got all like the a lot of the encrusters, the favias, the favites. Um. You like you love to group your corals. I notice. Yes. Yeah, Why is that? Well, I mean, you feel usually, like you can yeah, gather usually, the lighting and flow. Yeah. Usually they have similar similar types of, of lighting and flow and requirements. And requirements. So it just it, it keeps them keeps them organized. I mean, they could be organized better. We're still we and we I need to make the catalog. I haven't yet made the catalog. I don't know how many different types or species of corals that I have, but it's definitely. You and me were pretty similar to that. Isn't that crazy? I've been dying to make a catalog. Well, we need for a to long do it. You know, it's, 
it's a whole full-time job for somebody to, to, to go through. I mean, it's probably, <laughs> I mean? a you know, it's like, could be a thousand different types of coral. I might need least. two guys for that. Yeah, you, I mean, your collection's got to be a whole order of magnitude crazier. So yeah, so. It's a, it's a lot, but yeah, I've got, you know, a little, again, a little bit, a little bit of everything here. Um, so. Some SPS frags. So since you talk about our, our collection and I see you're collecting a lot, mm -hmm. you have now been to a new facility I, I know, well, for shame. So can we maybe see you there in two months in Absolutely. when Rifapalooza comes around, two, three months? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. That, we yeah, should do, get we to should, show you everything around, you that'll know? That would be really cool. I'll, I'll definitely, that's like a reefer's paradise. Got the, the, the big reef octopus, I think that's the, the 8000 uh, XP um, Silver. external protein skimmer. Then I've got, um, yeah. we, we have all of the, um, the media reactors in the sump, mostly, you know, we could be running the, the, the calcium reactor out of the sump, but it's really just kind of redundancy. Um, in case there was a leak, it'll only leak into the, into the sump. So, you know, it makes things a little bit tighter in, in the sump than they need to, but at the same time, it, it's just cuts back on a potential problem. When, when you don't li live where you have your tanks, you know, it's, it's sort of nice to have those uh, fail safes overnight. And this system's been running for a year and a half, right? Year and a half. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And they're both identical as far as filtration goes. Pretty much, uh, pretty much identical. You know, we we, we have uh, UV ster 90 watt UV sterilizer, and an algae turf scrubber. This uh, I, one of my favorite alveoporas that I picked up at I think Reefa Palooza for a hundred bucks, and you know I was like, okay, you only want a hundred bucks for that coral? Sure thing. <laughs> it's a it's wild, but it, you know it's it's a, it's really nice. And then I've got uh, some some of these really nice. Uh, we got some yellow. That is beautiful. Color. Yeah, this this one and it, and it, under higher light it gets yellow, so it's like hyper yellow, green, and red. I um, love it. I got that. that Reef, I think I got that at Reef of Palooza, New York, in 2017 when when Gorgeous. you had me speak up there. Yeah, that's half of it. I have the other the other half is looks like is now getting um, kind of and that's not getting as much light. These bleached out on me. Um, about three months ago. This thing is gorgeous, into this, into this gorgeous, tank. gorgeous, gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah, and I, you can see I, I put, put stuff up on PVC risers. I think that so helps. So mimicking rocks without having to do a lot of the cleanup. Yeah, exactly. And it gets them up into higher flow, higher light, and it makes it real easy to kind of like keep them, keep them separated. I, I cut a little cross at the bottom so that I can I get stick it into the egg crate. Um, and then uh, in, in this tank, I've got my kind of like, I got a collection of, of hammer corals and Euphilia, so I guess is what they call them Some star polyps, um, some Hollywood yeah, stoners over there. Some octa, octa spawn, some uh, frog Gorgeous. spawn. Gorgeous, they look so um, freaking happy. Yeah, this, this, is the, this is the original Pasolopera colony that I got from DJ Skitty uh, in 2015 that is the mother of all of the babies that grew on the wall of the, the, yeah. tanks, the tanks in the house. So that's like a... Is that that's what's like cool a seven, to see like a giant eight, mother? That's like an eight-year-old Pasolopera, which, uh, nice. which is really cool. Um, but I love I love all the I love the euphilias uh, the femorphilias they're one of my favorite corals. Um, again, I do a lot of feeding. The the, the bicolor. I love the feel of those hammers yeah, you got there. I've they're been gorgeous. growing I've been growing those for, for for more than 12 years and started with just a couple of heads and they're a really good grower. Beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. and sometimes they're green, sometimes they're purple, sometimes they're splattered. And then all I've right. Got, so last yeah. but not least. Yeah. We this have here, what do we got, a little 80 gallon, 100 gallon cube, this something was, like that? This was my old studio aquarium um, that it's kind of been retired because it started to get, get some, so it was custom made by, by Reef Savvy maybe like 12 years ago. Okay. Um, and this is what I filmed, a lot of the, a lot of this early core morphologic films were, were, were filmed in here, but right now it's just sort of holding a lot of scraps of o overgrown uh, Indo-Pacific zoanthid. Zoanthid heaven. I got the, we got the Rastas and the Miami Hurricanes, the Oxides, the, you know, I got a little, little, bit, little bit of everything here. But uh, yeah, I've, I've run out of space, so we, we, we moved this over here and, and now just sort of have it separated uh, to have all of the corals under one roof finally. I love it. Yeah. They look so healthy, man. I can't help it but to, <sighs> do you those iodine in a specific tank like this? Yeah. Not really, and this is also this is connected. So these are, you know, this is all connected into the. Into the That's what I was going to ask you. This is connected to the sump yeah, as well. I, I, I dose iodine when I can remember. <laughs> you know, usually, usually, uh, probably every couple of weeks. But uh, it's not really something that I've, you know. Again, if you're if you're doing a lot of feeding, 
you know, there's a lot of iodine and, gotcha. and krill and seafood, and so. No, I was just asking because a lot mm -hmm. of times when I see good zoanthids like that, a lot yep. of people are just doing something special to them. They're so happy. Yeah, you know? I mean, it, a lot of it has to do with the tank mates. So, you know, these were not happy two weeks ago when these were in this tank, and that's because I have a climbing butterfly. He was that picking at them. Exactly, and same with the rabbit fish. You got to be careful with rabbit fish. Rabbit oh, fish. Oh, a lot of fish. Tanks, they're, they're rabbit fish, yeah. butterflies, they're, angels. Yeah, they're great for a bunch of years, and then one day they, you know, decide to. to yeah, to we we, we run into that a lot. Yeah, we have an angel that yeah. a, a pygmy angel. You might have it for four or five years. One day decides to pick a coral. Exactly. Same with copper band butterflies. You can have them for years, and they might turn on you one day. You know? All right, Colin. Yeah. Well, thank you for inviting us over. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. You know. I'm so glad you guys were able to make it. Yeah. If you guys have any questions that you guys would like Colin to answer, uh, to answer, please post them on the comments below. In the meantime, don't forget to give us a like, subscribe to our channel. We'll see you guys soon. All right. Take it easy.